Hey, it's Daniel Peterson here we're today. We're going to talk about how to get your QuickBooks file set up so that you're ready to issue your 1099s. We're going to jump in here and dig deep. It's going to be a few steps. I'm going to go fast, but you can pause and rewind this video at your convenience and capture the information that you need to get your QuickBooks file ready for your 1099s. So let's start with who in the world is required to issue a 1099. If you're in a trader business, you are required to issue a 1099 to anyone that you pay more than $600 for services. Now, the anyone has quotations around it. Let's talk about who is anyone. Anyone is an individual, single member LLC, a partnership. Those are the people that you're going to issue 1099s to. If they're a corporation, you're not required to issue a 1099. If they're an S corporation, you're not required to issue a 1099. If they're an attorney, however, whether they're, regardless of the entity type, you're required to issue them a 1099 if you pay them more than $600. Now, keep in mind, the payment that I'm referring to is a payment by check. If you pay those folks by credit card, you do not have a 1099 filing responsibility because the credit card companies issue 1099Ks to those individuals or companies. It's an important qualification. So if you're using QuickBooks to keep track of your books and records and you use QuickBooks properly to write checks or enter credit card charges, QuickBooks understands the difference between those two kinds of transactions. So that's our starting point. Next, how do you know what entity type these people are that you're paying? You're going to issue those folks a W-9. A W-9 is your request from them to provide you the necessary information so that you can issue a 1099 to that company or that individual. If and when you issue the W-9 to that company and request that information to be provided to you, they are required to provide that information to you. Now let's take a look at the form so that you understand what you'd be looking at when you get the form back. On the W-9, it's going to have a name as shown on your income tax return. So if this is a sole proprietor, that sole proprietor's individual name will show up in box one or should show up in box one. Their doing business as name will show up in box two. If it's a corporation, a partnership, they're going to list their name in box one. They may or may not have anything in box two. In box three, they're going to complete the appropriate boxes, whether they're an individual, sole proprietor, single member LLC. We call those disregarded entities in the industry. C corporation, S corporation, partnership, trust, or estate. If they're a limited liability company other than a single member LLC or a single member LLC that is elected to be treated as a different kind of entity, for example, a C corporation or an S corporation, they will complete this box here. So they'll put a C, an S, or a P. They'll also provide you your, their address and either their social security number or federal ID number. Now this document should be signed, dated, and in your records. Whether you issue them a 1099 or don't issue them a 1099, if you have this in your records and the IRS decides to challenge you that you didn't issue a 1099 properly, but you have this on file and you didn't write them a 1099 or give them a 1099 because the form said they were a corporation, you're not going to be penalized by the IRS. So let's figure out from that information, understanding who we have to issue 1099s to and what forms we need to gather the information necessary to issue the 1099s. How do we get QuickBooks to do what we need it to do to prepare those forms? Inside your vendor center, you're going to find a 1099 wizard. That 1099 wizard is going to have contained within it a mapping vendor payments. So these are your chart of accounts within your QuickBooks file. Advertising and promotion, computer internet expenses, consulting expenses. Those accounts 
will tell you whether those are services or not. Advertising and promotion could be website, it could be other development of um, or other consulting services related to the promotion of your business. So what we want to do in this Map Vendor Payments account is in our drop down menu choose Show All Accounts. This will basically open up so that it shows all of your chart of accounts. We want to include our advertising and promotions in our 1099s. So in the drop down menu, we want to make sure that we mark that as box seven, non-employee compensation. Our computer and internet expenses, non-employee compensation. If we're providing or if they're providing us services. And then our rent expense needs to be tagged to rent. So that's box one. All right, once we have gone through all of those accounts and mapped them to the appropriate 1099 box, we're going to roll our way back into the vendor center and we're going to find the particular vendors. The vendors have provided us the W9s. Now what do we do with that information? Inside the vendor center, we're going to locate the 1099 or the W9 company that we're dealing with. And in this case, it's Super Geek Accounting. And this W-9 that's been completed by the individual indicates that their name on their tax return in box one is Alan Dale, doing business as Super Geek Accounting. And he is an individual sole proprietor or single member LLC with his address and his FEIN number. So we're going to take that information and we're going to actually load that into the QuickBooks records. So how do we do that? When we have a sole proprietor, and this is a trick inside QuickBooks to make sure the 1099s actually get issued and printed properly, you're going to enter their name and all of the necessary information regarding their contact, their full address. So we've listed them in our vendor list as Super Geek Accounting because that's how we write the check. But they're a single member LLC, so it's really important that you put their full name in the full name box and make sure that populates down into the address line with their address information. Next, we're going to go to Tax Settings. In the tax settings, we're going to enter that company's federal ID number and we're going to tag them that they are eligible for the 1099. That's what tells QuickBooks that that company needs to be issued a 1099. If there's enough money paid to that vendor in that particular year, more than $600, then QuickBooks will issue a 1099 to that particular vendor. So we've got a mapping issue. We've got to make sure those accounts get associated with the mapping and we've got to make sure the vendor information is loaded and tagged as eligible for a 1099. So there's two places that you've got to pay attention to. In the event we have a corporation that has returned their W-9, there's nothing we need to do as far as making them eligible for a 1099. However, we found it to be very convenient, if you will, to make sure that corporation or Inc. is incorporated in the name of the vendor. It makes it a lot easier next year when you're trying to vet this information that are they a corporation or not, you've already added that information into the vendor screen. In the event we've got a property management company, this is a partnership. So here's our property management company. We've got their address listed in there. We'll verify that all that information is correct. And then again on our tax settings, we're going to list their federal ID number and tag them as eligible for a 1099. Okay, now is the time we're going to check ourselves to see if there's anything else that we might be missing. We go to vendors and the 1099 summary report. We're going to open up this 1099 summary report to reflect this calendar year. In our 1099 option drop down menus, we're going to choose all vendors, all allowed accounts, and ignore th thresholds. When we do that, we're going to get all of the 
payments made to all of our vendors listed in this report. So as we review this, we can see in our uncategorized column, we have some money paid to Touch Software Corporation. What is, why is it showing up in uncategorized? Well, that Touch Software Corporation is being tagged to software support. We apparently didn't map that account. How do we fix that? We go back to the 1099 wizard, find our software support from our list of chart of accounts, and we tell our software support that we want to include those 1099 payments as non-employee compensation. When we go back to our 1099 report, you will see that for that Touch Software Corporation, it is now under non-employee compensation, not uncategorized. Important steps to verify that you've mapped all of your accounts properly. The next step that you would go through is as you review each of these accounts or each of these vendors, you try to determine whether or not you should or should not be issuing a 1099 to those folks. In this particular example, we've got a company called Creative Works. There's an account that hasn't been mapped and Creative Works does not have a W-9 on file. Am I worried about it for 2020? Probably not because the payment is less than $600. So how do we take this information and focus our energies on those things that are $600? So the simplest way I've found to go about that is to export this 1099 summary report to an Excel file. Once we have that information exported to the Excel file, we'll sort it by the column totals. Once that information is sorted by the column totals, and we'll go largest to smallest, we can see who we paid more than $600, and that's going to be the focus of our energies. Do we need to issue 1099s to these people? That's where we want to focus our time. So once we've vetted that all of our accounts are mapped and that the entities are listed properly inside the system with their federal ID numbers and addresses, we can refine our summary report back to only the 1099 vendors, only the 1099 accounts, and using the 1099 thresholds of $600 or more. Once we see this summary report, you can see the name of the company, the federal ID number of each. The only thing that we can't verify from this screenshot is whether or not there's an address. So it looks like we've got a 1099 that wants to print for our Touch Software Corporation. So let's go back to that vendor center because we realize that they're a corporation and they are not eligible for a 1099. We will uncheck that box and go back to our summary report. And now we have Tri-City Consulting that's on here for $800 that we're missing a W-9. So we've got some homework. We'll go grab that information from them, uh, request it, and they'll send it to you, and then you can load that information into the vendor center when you're ready. So following that check and cross-check process, you'll be ready to print your 1099s. Now, the QuickBooks system is not ready to print 2020 1099s. It's only going to print 2019. So let me show you where you go to get those printed, but we won't be able to go all the way through. Under our vendors, our print 1099s, we have to go back into the wizard, work our way through, and then we can actually print the 1099s. And so when we print those, we can look at them on screen. I like to either look at them on screen or print them on paper to make sure that the information is laying out the way you'd expect it to. Build a sign company for $750 with their address. This is where you can find those individual single member LLCs. Here's Alan Dale's Super Geek Accounting's not showing up in the records because Alan Dale is how the IRS knows that person. So your federal ID number, their federal ID number, and the amount that you paid them. You'll notice when you went through the actual 1099 wizard, you can view excluded and included payments. Why is this here? 
if you have credit card payments that you made and you're using the QuickBooks system properly to enter credit card charges, those will show up as excluded payments. So you look at your 1099 summary report and say, I know I paid them more than that. You can come back to this QuickBooks 1099 wizard and review those included and excluded payments to make sure that those are working properly. So hopefully that helps you gather the information you need so that you're ready for the 1099 filing season and can get your books and records in order timely so that you're not stressed out in the month of January. Keep in mind, you've got to issue those 1099s, mail them to the IRS and to the recipient by February 1st, 2021 for this year.